Brought to you by wikivd.com Amber Alert An Amber Alert or a Child Abduction Emergency is a child abduction alert system. It originated in the United States in 1996. AMBER is officially a contrived acronym for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response, but was named after Amber Hageman, a nine-year-old abducted and murdered in Arlington, Texas, in 1996. Alternative regional alert names were once used in Georgia, Levi's Call, in Hawaii, Mailer Amber Alert, and Arkansas, Morgan Nick Amber Alert. In the United States, Amber Alerts are distributed via commercial radio stations, internet radio, satellite radio, television stations, and cable TV by the Emergency Alert System and NOAA Weather Radio. The alerts are also issued via email, electronic traffic condition signs, commercial electronic billboards, or through wireless device SMS text messages. Amber Alert has also teamed up with Google, Bing, and Facebook to relay information regarding an Amber Alert. To an ever-growing demographic, Amber Alerts are automatically displayed if citizens search or use map features on Google or Bing. With the Google Child Alert, citizens see an Amber Alert if they search for related information in a particular location where a child has recently been abducted and an alert was issued. This is a component of the Amber Alert system that is already active in the U.S. Those interested in subscribing to receive Amber Alerts in their area via SMS messages can visit wireless Amber Alerts, which are offered by law as free messages. In some states, the display scroll boards in front of lottery terminals are also used. The decision to declare an Amber Alert is made by each police organization that investigates each of the abductions. Public information in an Amber Alert usually consists of the name and description of the abductee, a description of the suspected abductor, and a description and license plate number of the abductor's vehicle, if available. Activation Criteria The alerts are broadcast using the Emergency Alert System, which had previously been used primarily for weather bulletins, civil emergencies, or national emergencies. Alerts usually contain a description of the child and of the likely abductor to avoid both false alarms and having alerts ignored as a wolf cry. The criteria for issuing an alert are rather strict. Each state's or province's Amber Alert plan sets its own criteria for activation, meaning that there are differences between alerting agencies as to which incidents are considered to justify the use of the system. However, the U.S. Department of Justice issues the following guidance, which most states are said to adhere closely to. Many law enforcement agencies have not used as a criterion, resulting in many parental abductions triggering an Amber Alert, where the child is not known or assumed to be at risk of serious injury or death. In 2013, West Virginia passed Skylar's law to eliminate as a criterion for triggering an Amber Alert. It is recommended that Amber Alert data immediately be entered into the Federal Bureau of Investigation National Crime Information Center. Text information describing the circumstances surrounding the abduction of the child should be entered, and the case flagged as child abduction. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police's requirements in Canada are nearly identical to the above list with the exception that the RCMP instead of the FBI is normally notified. One organization might notify the other if there is reason to suspect that the border may be crossed. When investigators believe that a child is in danger of being taken across the border to either Canada or Mexico, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, United States Border Patrol, 
and the Canada Border Services Agency are notified and are expected to search every car coming through a border checkpoint. If the child is suspected to be taken to Canada, a Canadian Amber Alert can also be issued, and a pursuit by Canadian authorities usually follows. Amber Hageman On January 13, 1996, nine-year-old Amber Renee Hageman was abducted while riding her bike in Arlington, Texas. A neighbor who witnessed the abduction called the police, and Amber's brother Ricky went home to tell you his mother and grandparents what happened. On hearing the news, Hageman's father Richard called Mark Klaas, whose daughter Polly had been abducted and murdered in Petaluma, California, on October 1, 1993. It is often believed that Hageman's murderer kept her alive for at least two days. Richard Hageman and Amber's mother, Donna Whitson, called the news media and the FBI. The Whitsons and the neighbors began searching for Amber. Four days after the abduction, near midnight, her body was found in a creek behind an apartment complex with cut wounds to her neck. The site of the discovery was less than five miles from where she went missing. There are no suspects to her abduction and homicide. Program Development Within days of Amber's death, Donna Whitson was calling for tougher laws governing kidnappers and sex offenders. Amber's parents soon established people against sex offenders. They collected signatures hoping to force the Texas legislature into passing more stringent laws to protect children. God's Place International Church donated the first office space for the organization, and as the search for Amber's killer continued, PASO received almost daily coverage in local media. Companies donated various office supplies, including computer and internet service. Congressman Martin Frost, with the help of Mark Klaas, drafted the Amber Hageman Child Protection Act. Both of Hageman's parents were present when President Bill Clinton signed the bill into law, creating the National Sex Offender Registry. Whitson and Richard Hageman then began collecting signatures in Texas, which they planned to present to then-Governor George W. Bush as a sign that people wanted more stringent laws for sex offenders. In July 1996, Bruce Sabert and Richard Hageman attended a media symposium in Arlington. Although Hageman had remarks prepared on the day of the event, the organizers asked Sabert to speak instead. In his 20-minute speech, he spoke about efforts that local police could take quickly to help find missing children, and how the media could facilitate those efforts. C.J. Wheeler, a reporter, from radio station KRLD, approached the Dallas police chief shortly afterward with Sabair's ideas and launched the first ever Amber Alert. Whitson testified in front of the U.S. Congress in June 1996, asking legislators to create a nationwide registry of sex offenders. Representative Martin Frost, the congressman who represents Whitson's district, proposed an Amber Hageman Child Protection Act. Among the sections of the bill was one that would create a national sex offender registry. For the next two years, alerts were made manually to participating radio stations. In 1998, the Child Alert Foundation created the first fully automated alert notification system to notify surrounding communities when a child was reported missing or abducted. Alerts were sent to radio stations as originally requested, but included television stations, surrounding law enforcement agencies, newspapers and local support organizations. These alerts were sent all at once via pages, faxes, emails, and cell phones with the information immediately posted on the Internet for the general public to view. 
Following the automation of the Amber Alert with ANS technology created by the Child Alert Foundation, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children expanded its role in 2002 to promote the Amber Alert. Although in 1996 now CEO of the NCMEC declined to come in and further assist the Amber Alert. When asked to by Bruce Sabert and Richard Hagerman and has since worked actively to see alerts distributed using the nation's existing emergency radio and TV response network. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.